Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope all is well. On this video, I want to get my final thoughts on the Colorado versus Nebraska game. There's a lot of takeaways from this game. A lot of questions been answered in this game as well. Colorado faced a lot of adversity. They showed character and heart and they worked through it and they persevered. Even Shador talked about it. So let's get into it. Stay tuned. Guys, please do me a favor. Before we get into this video, please give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops. All of that will be greatly appreciated by me. Hey guys, before we get started, do me a favor, go into the description section of this video. There you will find a list of all the players on the Colorado team that have YouTube pages. Make sure you check them out and subscribe today. Like I said before, this wasn't a perfect game. Each game is not going to be like the TCU game. We know that TCU game was amazing. Shador threw for 510 yards, 510 yards. In this game, he had a very respectable game as well. He fought back, he persevered, he got sacked a, num uh, a number of times, but he did not let that get to him. See, this is another thing about him. He doesn't get rattled under pressure. It's very hard to shake him. I don't think I've ever seen him shaking in a game. I think Shador believes that it doesn't matter the game. I always have an opportunity to come back. He is the leader of this team. He is the quarterback. So everything falls on him. This is a very good team here. But Shador talked about this adversity and how he, what he learned from this game. Take a look at this. You know, there was a straight run the ball the whole game formation. So it was really... Uh, it was really hard, I'd say, studying the tape to get intimate and know, okay, their tails and what they're going to do. But I truly appreciate going through this game, going through this with my team, so we know how to respond when adversity hits. Because last week, it was, it was back and forth, back and forth. But this week, okay, the defense stepped up. The offense was really, was really slacking. But it was a good defense we played, though. I like the scheme. I like the scheme of them. It made it, it, made it tough on us. But I'm just happy I was able to face it. So next time going against it, I'll be good. That shows a lot of maturity from him. He said, look, you know, we had a lot of issues in this game, but I'm glad we did because now we have film. And that's what the practice field is for. And that's what looking at film is for to correct our mistakes. Did he get hit a lot? Yes, he did. But they have room to correct that. And I think as the season go on, they're going to correct these uh, mistakes. I honestly believe that. But there were a lot of bright spots in the game where the offensive line held up. So I'm not knocking the offensive line too much. This is a new team and... A lot of people wouldn't have never thought that they would be 2-0 and right now. <laughs> but after fighting through, they finally struck gold with Tavares Dawson. That was a, a pretty good play by Tavares Dawson. Now, Tavares Dawson, he's a transfer from Auburn. Pretty, He's a speed, speedster, wide receiver. Like I said, he's very fast. And this team has a lot of weapons. I mean, Xavier Weaver, Tavares Dawson, Jimmy Horn Jr. I mean, the list goes on and on. Javon Antonio, he didn't even play in this game. But that was a very good play by Tavares Dawson. I remember in a live chat, we were talking about sacks. They need to get to the quarterback. Oh, yeah, they did. Wasn't that sack much needed? Yeah, this team has a lot of character, folks. This is a very good team. We said it before, TCU was a very great team, and they beat TCU. They hung in there with TCU and ran up the score. This The, the possibilities for this uh, team is endless. Xavier Weaver came up big during this game. He transferred in from the University of South Florida with his friend Jimmy Horn Jr. He said before the season, wherever Jimmy was going, I was going because they became very close while playing at South Florida. And then he came up big today. Yeah, I'm gonna be 
He's a very solid wide receiver. I believe he said this was his last year and he wanted to ball out and he has aspirations on going to the NFL. I think he's going to get his shot. We'll say you. Also, drop a comment below. Let me know your takeaways from the game. What was the highlight of the game for you? There was a lot of highlights during this game. I'm only showing a few, but what were your highlights? I'm curious to know. Drop a comment below. Now, I knew the stars were aligned. I mean, we were watching Xavier Weavers play. I mean, he's having a very he was having a very strong game. You know, um, Shador has a lot of weapons and you never know who's going to strike gold. But I knew the stars were aligned. I knew the stars were aligned when Shador pass got deflected and, and Dylan Edwards just came up with it. This is ridiculous. You know, I have to play it one more again in slow motion. The stars were aligned in that moment, in that very moment. That's how I knew. The stars were aligned, man. I want to take this time to give a special shout out to Well Off Media, Reach the People Media, and the pregame show. All of this excitement that we're seeing is possible by Deion Sanders Jr. They call him Bucky. No other team is really doing this. How they doing it. It's almost you're there in first person. And it's like that throughout the season leading up to the season. We started with them in the spring game. Spring session one and two. Then they moved into the summer session one and two. Leading up to training camp. You got a bird's eye view from his lens from first person. And you feel like you're part of the team. In my opinion, this is a huge part of what makes this team so special. Coach Prime embraces social media. He's always been that way with the media ever since he got drafted to the Atlanta Falcons you know neon Dion. he always found a way to promote himself and that's what he's doing here so the fans could follow the team they could follow their ups and downs they can follow their highs their lows things like that you feel like you know the team but you don't know the team so shout out to well off media that's Dion sanders page reach the people media in a pregame show all of those links are in the description as well as the players um links to their youtube pages so check them out they say speed certainly kills huh dylan speed kills don't it This running back room is very deep, as deep as the abyss. Any given time, you could have Anthony Hankerson out there. You can have Dylan Edwards, the transfer from Jackson State, Savion Wilkerson. But Dylan Edwards speed, man, and they haven't even showcased Alton McCaskill yet. They're going to save him for the big game. I remember in my last live chat, someone made that comment. They're going to save him for the big game, and um, it's coming. They're going to save him, and I can't wait for him to get out there, but that adds depth. It keeps the defense guessing like what's gonna happen but i can't wait till Alton mccaskill get out there but speed kills dylan hey travis real quick uh travis hunter did you pull a allen iverson on your opponent Yeah, he pulled an Allen Iverson. You remember Allen Iverson stepping over Tyron Lue in the playoffs? Travis Hunter, Travis is acting up. He pulled the Allen Iverson. But Dylan, Dylan, you okay? What's going on, Dylan? <laughs> Dylan Edwards means a lot to this team. Not only is he fast, Dylan Edwards had the opportunity to come to camp early. Remember, he was at spring session one and two. Then he went on to the summer leading up to training camp. He benefited from getting with the team early. There's a few other freshmen. They came late. But Dylan Edwards, every time I saw him in practice, he worked hard. He's breaking major yardage. So I'm not surprised that he's having um, a really good showing this season. I'm not surprised with Dylan Edwards, but he means a lot to this team. He's going to be a focal point and he's going to be very important leading up to the midseason to late season. Um, Dylan Edwards, uh, we need him to stay healthy and, and we need him out there grinding. He's a grinder. Shador Sanders, I, I don't know what else to say about him. Shador is very poised. He's calm. You know, 
it doesn't seem like he gets rattled under pressure. Then he capped it off with a touchdown of his own. And I had said it right before the game. I said he's known to run, and he will get in that end zone and do the Neon Dion. Oh, yeah. That brother did the Neon Dion, y'all, reminiscent of his father, how his father used to get in the end zone and do his little shuffle or whatnot. We used to call it the Neon Dion back in the day. But this team, just to end this video, the team worked hard. They persevered through adversity. Like Shador Sanders said, they need this. They need this test to go back to the drawing board and look at film and see what errors they need to correct. This team is scary. They're scary good. They're going to get better as the season go on. It's not a situation where they're going to get worse. I, they're going to get better as the season progresses. Sky's the limit for this legendary season. This is the first season under the Coach Prime era. No one gave them a chance. In fact, people said they're lucky if they win two games. Guys, they're 2-0. We'll say you. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys. But before you go, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops. If you have any video ideas, feel free to leave a comment below. Take care.